Welcome to the podcast named Tim, another Mandalorian episode review. Today's episode, we're going to be talking about The Siege, aka Chapter 12 of The Mandalorian. A uh, different spot for filming because, you know, things happen. Anyway, more importantly, The Mandalorian came out with another really good episode um, directed by Carl Weathers, uh, Grief Karga himself. Um, this episode sees the Mandalorian going back to, I don't remember the name of the, of the planet, but the main planet where most of season one took place. He's going back. We meet up with Cara Dune and Grief Karga again. And the Mandalorian needs some extra uh, ship repairs uh, from, from last episode. And while that's going on, they want to show him the reformed town. Uh, there's schools now. There's um, less villainy, scum and villainy around, but there's one last problem they need to solve, and that is an Imperial base that is a couple miles out of town, and they basically say, if we can help us with this, we can clear out the, uh, the last remnants of the Empire here, and we'll be able to be kind of a trading hub for this sector. So, Mandalorian agrees to help his old friends out, and the, uh, the blue guy, the, I think his name is Mithro, from uh, the very first episode of Mandalorian, the guy that he caught the bounty of and put in carbonite, is back. He worked off, his, he's working on his debt for uh, Grief Karga. So um, they go on a little adventure. Some people may say a side adventure, and I know the Mandalorian gets a lot of flack for being kind of episodic in that regard. But to me, uh, they've all been great, and um, this, is no, this is no different. Great action. Great Baby Yoda, um, cuteness overload. We got a great opening shot of him, um, uh, or not opening shot, opening scene, where he's like trapped inside of a little section of the ship, and the Mandalorian trying to walk him through, making some repairs, and kind of baby talking him and stuff. It was really great. We also see, and I don't, I'm sure this was done on purpose, the Mandalorian is kind of barely taking up his helmet to take some sips of water or something to drink, and the reason I say that is... It's the first confirmation that the baby might have seen him without his helmet. Um, so that might be interesting as far as his ideas of the code. Um, but the big, big, big deal about this episode is what they find when they're at the Imperial base. And that is a lab. Um, it is an interesting idea. We, we knew from the first season that they were after the child. I think they had kind of talked about can't remember exactly what they, what they had hinted out, but I think it's what most people were expecting. They were extracting blood from the child in order to um, use its M counts, uh, which of course I'm I'm one thousand percent sure, of, as everyone else is, that that means midichlorians, uh, um, to transfuse it into a another a host body and see if it could, I guess, give them the force. Um, but what's interesting is we don't get full confirmation of what's going on with this lab, it, which is great. That's the best thing about Star Wars is, uh, the ability to speculate about what might be coming next. Uh, most of the rest of the episode is just a lot of, um, action, great chase sequence, good firefights, good comic relief from Mithro. So I really want to focus on this speculation. And I, I should say at the end of the episode, they escape. There's a really cool dogfight chase scene at the end. And, um... And we do find out, of course, or they find out that Moff Gideon is still alive. And he has put a tracker on his, um, on the, the uh, Mando ship. One of the people who are fixing the ship up or was actually an agent for him. And so they are going to be chasing him. And we do find out the Moff has like these line of black armored things. I've seen a lot of people say that they're dark troopers, which apparently are uh, battle droids, imperial battle droids. So that'd be really cool to see. But what's more interesting is this the, the lab idea because it has a lot of different ideas. Of so this review is going to be a little different, not line by line. I re really want to get into this idea of this lab. There's really only three or four options as far as what they might be doing on this lab, and they each have their own different consequences, both for the show and for the greater Star Wars uni uh, universe. The first and most obvious one may be that what they are trying to do is bring back the Emperor. Of course, Moff Gideon is part of the Empire. And um, obviously we know in the uh, Rise of Skywalker that the Emperor does come back through a cloning process. If you remember, the people who are working there have a, a badge or like a little um, emblem on their uh, on their uniforms, and it's the Camino um, lab symbol. So they, are, they have worked with cloning before. So maybe this is the early idea of testing out 
what um, what the, what led to Snoke and what led to the Emperor coming back. And the reason I like that idea is, in some respects, from a business perspective, I guess, is that means from a storyline perspective, at the end of the show, they have to catch Baby Yoda, and it might have a melancholy end, as, because we know the Emperor comes back, and if they need the baby to bring back Snoke or bring back the Emperor, which we know is what happens, that would be, to me, in some respects, I get what you're trying to do there, because you're going to put all that heat on the Emperor and on Snoke, and make people hate him that much more, because we're going to build up Yoda and Baby Yoda and the Mandalorian, they're going to fail, and their failure is going to lead to the Emperor. And so, when you the next time you watch Rise of Skywalker, you're going to hate him even more. That's option one. Option two is maybe Moff Gideon wants to uh, do some kind of su- super soldier program, kind of create an army of force-sensitive people. That would make sense. Um, but the third option is is a more interesting one, and I'm going to imagine it's what it's going to get into. I would not be surprised if they go the Snoke route, but this is what led to the Sn- uh, Snoke and the Emperor coming back. The third option is maybe Moff Gideon himself wants to be Force-sensitive. And he already has a lightsaber, the dark saber to be specific, obviously. So he's already taken one step into wanting or to uh, trying to enter into that realm. So maybe he is wanting to um, enter that realm even more. And I think it might go, if this is the case, I think it's going to go more into just wanting power. Obviously, he knows, oh, we don't know, but the Emperor was in charge. He had the, the Force, you know, we had Vader. These are the, you know, the people who were in charge of the Empire, and so wanting to to get the Force and wanting to have lightsabers and etc., that would make perfect sense if you wanted to install yourself as the new leader of some kind of Imperial regime. But it might go in further. Um, the great thing about storytelling is you always want your villain and your hero to be similar but different. People that have gone through the same things, but um, chose to handle those adversities in different ways. It's just like the killing joke, if you've ever seen that with with Batman and the Joker. The idea being they're kind of the same person. They've both dealt with, with loss, um, but one of them used to strengthen themselves. The other one, it drew, drove them mad. Maybe that's what we're dealing with here between Moff Gideon and... and um, the Mandalorian. The Mandalorian was saved by um, by uh, by people during by the Mandalorians during um, the Clone Wars when some battle uh, droids attacked him. Maybe Moff Gideon also suffered some kind of loss. I'm, I'm not sure where they are age wise, how comparable it is, but maybe he suffered some kind of loss. Maybe the Jedi caused some kind of death in his family. We've seen the Clone Wars touch on this before where, um, you know, the Jedi messed up or something got destroyed and it ruined someone's life. And then they they had a different perception of the Jedi as some other people would. So maybe he wants to kind of control this power because he's it's it's hurt him. And this would be two, again, two ways of uh, two villains, and, a villain and a hero who are dealing with that loss of family early on in their life differently. The Mandalorian taking on this code of honor and dealing and becoming a Mandalorian, and maybe Moff Gideon trying to take and become what what he feared, and then using it for for evil. Um, so, just an interesting idea there. I don't I don't know what do you, what do you think is in the lab? I'd love to hear that because it's it's a big it's a big question to me. Um, I, I I messaged Dad, who I of course do our normal podcast with, and he said meh. To the episode, I don't think he really cared for it that much, but I don't know if he really sat and thought about how the potential of what this 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 lab uh, situation presents for um, what what might happen to the child and what Moff Gideon's character uh, might be. I, I think for anyone who didn't like this episode, I think when we get to, at the end of this series as a whole, I think we're going to look back on this episode as a defining moment for the trajectory of where the show's going to go because of, of that specific scene. Um, and either way, whether it's just kind of something with Moff Gideon and him wanting to, I hope it's not just, I want power. I hope there's some deeper meaning to it, but, or, or the Snoke aspect. 
Um, but either way, I thought it was a really good episode, as always. Great to see some of the old characters from Season 1. I would imagine next week, uh, with with Episode 5, um, or Chapter 13, uh, I imagine that we're going to be seeing Ahsoka. Um, it's, always, it's obviously already been teased. Um, and that'll be an interesting dynamic as far as what's going to happen as well, because the Mandalorian is searching for the Jedi, and if you remember, Ahsoka is no longer a Jedi, so she is Force-sensitive and knows of the Jedi ways, but she is not a Jedi herself, and so that dynamic and, and might be interesting. Um, and if Moff Gideon shows up because he can track him, and she and he has the dark saber, she knows who that's supposed to belong to, so that might be an interesting thing as well. Um, but um, yeah, it's just uh, a lot, a lot of potential ways they can take this story. Um, and just so simple of a concept and thing that's uh, of, of a show, and there's just you know they're not doing anything mind blowing, but there's just little things and little story beats where it can go a million different directions and make a completely different show. So excited to see where it goes. Let me know your thoughts on this episode of The Mandalorian and uh, speculation for for what was what does the lab mean? What is this going to mean for for The Mandalorian moving forward? So uh, good episode. See you all next time here on a podcast named Tim.